Just make sure before you say anything, like every single time you roll out, (laughs) before every single time you say anything. Just give it a little... Right, so welcome to episode three of Mishaps Manage, the official podcast of the Mishap Inc. Star Citizen Player Organization. Uh, we have had an increase in listeners, including people, it seems, that are going back to listen to the first episode after finding us for episode two. So I do want to thank people for listening and hopefully enjoying. Um, it's something that we're doing for fun, but it's very cool to see other people outside of our org taking interest in what we have to say. So thank you. Uh, as a reminder, I'm your host slash MC, uh, Witty Phrase, joined by my regular co-hosts, uh, Mishap CEO Yurik and second in command and director of air security, Tam. We're also joined joined tonight by our very first guest that we're honored to have for this episode in game he's a uh, oni 102 but we just call him oni he's our director of industrial operations don't let that fool you though while industry may be where he hangs his hat he's incredibly talented at all in-game combat applications as well making him quite the renaissance man Additionally, I don't know how old he is because I've never asked specifically, but he is always the first to catch some of my more dated film, TV, or pop culture references. Um, I'm not sure if that's a factor of your age, Oni, or just an exceptionally uh, good taste in entertainment. Uh, Oni, care to introduce yourself and maybe tell our listeners uh, how long you've been playing, what drew you to the game, keeps you here, and your responsibilities within the org? Sure. Yeah. Uh, My name is Oni102. As he just stated, I am the industrial director for Mishap, uh, which includes just all facets of salvage, mining, uh, cargo running, et cetera, et cetera, anything that's going to come down the pipe. Um, I've been playing this game for about a year and a half now. Um. At first, I was just running solo, but a buddy of mine who's also in the org, uh, that would be Code 4 Medic, he turned me on to Mishap and just kind of ran with it from there. I was not Uh, aware of that connection, by the way. So that's, see, I learned something new every time we do an episode. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I know all your references because I am just that old. (laughs) <laughs> are you older than me? I, I won't make you say it but are you older than me i'm 38 are, are you older than me yes okay good, <laughs> good. no question no question good. thank goodness do you do you know how old he is tam oh no i'm just saying the way okay. he said that was just like yeah. oh yeah, yeah was, way like, way like, over like, like not, not there's, even there's the hill and i'm over that and the next one like <laughs> I did not know that. Wow. If, okay, if, cool. if Oni's, it, I could tell because I, I'll say stuff and there'll be like a little bit of like silence where people try to figure it out, except from Oni, who I hear giggling like very quietly, <laughs> but like back, like that, that giggle when I say it. And then everyone else kind of catches up after. And I'm like, oh, Oni is, I don't know, if seen anything, this movie. He saw it in the theater when it released. If anything gave it away, <laughs> it should have been Jenny's number from the other night. <laughs> We do have a lot we do want to get to tonight. It's been a pretty, I don't know if exciting is the right word, but eventful uh, week in Star Citizen, all things considered. Uh, We've had the letter from Chairman Chris Roberts, which seems to have sparked a degree of optimism that is not entirely common in Star Citizen. Um, The sale of a new ship, which is always interesting to see how people react to it because there's no ship price point that is ever right for most people in the game um a new gameplay event leaks on upcoming content um and, and that content patch in its early forms getting pushed to um the evocati testing and obviously we have opinions on all of that so unlike other weeks where we've recorded i don't think we've pissed off an entire server full of people or hundreds of redditors this week i think this has been a fairly low-key week in terms of who we've like pissed off right like we're we're pretty low-key right you you haven't you haven't shit talked anybody into like attacking us on reddit and then i've gotten in trouble for defending us right we're, we're pretty clear well to be fair there has been the bug that makes you have to type what you're saying more than once and that has curbed it quite a bit um, but no, yeah, this was a very clean week for us. Uh, no events that involved other players, so no anti care bearism treatment. We've been we've been good. The the night is young, though, guys. The yeah, night is, is young, moving? but but yeah. but th- th- this episode is recording, and we'll we'll be free and clear before we're done, right? Sorry, only get. 
<laughs> I was going to say, are we moving up or are we moving back? I think that's up. I think it's up. I mean, I, like we're trying to make progress where we can, right? Like I got called out for drinking a juice box last week. And so now I've got a cocktail instead. So I think that's, that's progress all around. Is that just I mean, a- we know that you just poked a hole in the juice box, poured it the cup. I mean, yeah, no, yeah, this, this, is, is. <laughs> this is legit, man. Like I, I looked up a recipe I made for St. Patty's day. I wanted to make like a, an Irish whiskey cocktail. So I had to make something for just for tonight. So it's been sitting in the fridge pre-made until it's ready to go this evening. It's juice box in the alcohol. It's just ju- just really- juice box and whiskey. It's all. <laughs> it's all it is. That's my whiskey cocktail. Um, so why don't we we start with with the letter? Um, obviously, Mister Roberts is a bit of a sales job to do with anything he says, right? And that that's not out of the ordinary, but also a bit of teasing and and a presentation of I think kind of an optimistic outlook um, that a release of Star Citizen is on the horizon. He called it a twinkle uh, on the horizon behind Pyro coming in four point oh. Um, but he did mention it. I think there's been a fair degree of overindulgent speculation about what that statement means. I think the community is a little or pretty good at fudging um, vocabulary to suit a narrative. And so I'll reserve judgment for this point in time. But I'm going to pose a question to you guys specifically um, as gamers in general, as leaders of this org and, and as Star Citizen players who have cumulatively spent thousands of dollars in this game that we all believe in. What do you need to see in Star Citizen 1.0 to be satisfied that the game is in a state that's really ready to be released. Like this is appropriate and an appropriate time to say Star Citizen 1.0 is coming out. And I'm going to ask Oni to answer first as a guest and as a different perspective from what we've shared before uh, as our industrial lead. So what I want to see for Star Citizen 1.0, mostly, well, from an industrial perspective, homesteading. I am huge on the whole homesteading aspect. Like, I love survival games. I've played a ton. And when that gets all fleshed out and I can finally put forth my plan on how to, you know, build houses for the, all of the org or just have a safe place for everybody to go that's well stocked, um, it'll be great. And then it'll just maintain it from that point, from a non-industrial perspective, just like first person's fine. I have no issues with that as it is, but the balancing of master modes is really what I'm also looking forward to because a lot of things become meta and I'm not saying that something isn't going to be, but it always seems to be one-sided in some aspect or another. So if, if, if 1.0 has homesteading like worked out and, and solid, you're good to go for the game. Oh, absolutely. Like that's going to become my life pretty much. All right. I like that. Tam, how about you? Um, so with, with the understanding that 1.0 is, um, functionally, um, being considered, this is now a game. You no longer have the, it's in development, it's early access, like none of that exists. This is now a game that you're selling as a game um, kind of thing. I, I think they're going to have to do a lot of work to um, bang out a lot of bugs, uh, make it a lot smoother for new players to actually get in and play the game without, I mean, because like right now as as a new player, like there's a whole lot of YouTubing going on to figure out what the heck you're supposed to do um, or, or join an org and, and have somebody hold your hand. Um, but like n- there's very little actually in the game, like cooked into the, the game itself for somebody to just buy the game, sit down and just start playing and actually be able to do stuff. Like it's not, it's not spelled out for you. It's not, you know what I'm saying? Um, Oh yeah. So, so bugs making it to where a new player can actually get in and, and start playing it without issue. Um, I would say those are two of the biggest things. Um, and then probably the, the third thing that I'd like to see, I don't know if they're going to actually do this, but there's multiple game loops that they've, um, established and sold us ships for 
that don't exist currently. Um, Exploration is a big one, um, but you have stuff like refining, base building, um, stuff like that, right? Where they've sold us ships for them, and whether the ship is flyable or it's a concept ship, either way, um, and exploration is a really big one where there's a lot of ships for it, flyable, and they're completely non-functional from that perspective. Um, and so, and again, I don't know if they'll actually do this, but I would like to see those loops actually established. Um, just because it's like, okay, you know, you have a constellation Aquila and it functionally does nothing other than what any constellation does, you know? So it's like, okay, why, you know? Um, and so I, I would like to see, and, and, historically they've said that that'll be something on on release i'd like to see those main main loops banged out to where they're actually you know there's actually content and and the ability to actually play them um in in the game um and then i guess i i was thinking that was my final point but my my actual (laughs) final point um is the capability to jump to other systems um kind of regardless of how they do that which obviously server meshing and, and, and all that um, is is the concept. But regardless of, of how they do that, I think that that's a pretty big deal. Um, you, don't, you don't just mean the existence of the systems in a way to transition between them, right? Like you have, having- you have to be able to successfully transition between for things like economy, cargo running, you know, et, et cetera. Um, and I don't... <clears throat> the, the economy could exist as it is now, um, which is basically not a not a great economy um, on a 1.0, but without the ability to transfer between systems and stuff, I I, I genuinely think that's that'd be a, a pretty big problem to call the game released and not have that tech built out. Um, so, all legit, yeah. Yerk. Trying to think a little bit. I guess I'm thinking a little bit beyond what they kind of told us because I feel like what they're already testing right now is going to be the biggest part of what makes it 1.0. Um, I, I do agree with Tam, you know, if if it works to where, you know, you're not able to switch between systems as seamlessly as they're making it sound, you know, this is not going to be it. But from what it sounds like, if the technologies are working behind the scenes like they're supposed to, even even if we have, you know, and I mean this, even if we have 20 or 30, 30 Ks in an hour, um, even if it's, you know, the desync is crazy. If it's working, I, I see it moving in that direction. Just because from what people were able to do just five, six years ago in the game, what they promised and what they've delivered, it to me, that would be what we need to see. Those technologies working hand in hand with the player load that they're thinking about. And I mean, yeah, I feel like it would be right there. So I guess my list is a little, a little, I don't know if esoteric is the right word. I, I get like, I think I'm, I'm taking all the tech tools is basically a given, right? Like that's like the RST L and E of the game releases that you have, you have to have that you can't call it a release game if that's not there. Cause then it's just not functional. I'm looking more at like gameplay stuff, I guess. And I'm not saying you guys are wrong. I'm just saying like, I think that's how I was approaching it was what are the gameplay elements that have to be there. Um, and for me, it's like everything they've promised or, or I guess more like released ships that suggest this is going to be there. They need to make good on that. Like you can't go live and then be like, Oh, we'll get to exploration when we release the first expansion. One of my concerns in some of the, the dialogue around the game in the past couple of months that I've seen is talking about, Oh, it's an MMO and MMOs do like they do content releases like on an ongoing basis. Well, yeah, sure. But that that's like expanding content, new content, new features. It shouldn't be what the primary gameplay features are supposed to be. So exploration's got to be in there, better thought out, like medical gameplay's got to be there. The the homesteading stuff, like base building, those things have to be there. Territory to fight over that, that that's got to be in. So for me, it's all those gameplay loops and and those gameplay concepts have to be in. And then it's for me a lot of like the the smaller things that I really want to see. Like I want to see actual mechanisms in the game to support 
cooperative gameplay and like org stuff being a huge one of them. Like as it is now, orgs practically do not exist in the game. They exist on the back end, like on the website. You can sign up for orgs and join orgs and you can check what org people are in. But there's no org chat as a general matter. There's no easy way to see who from your org is online. Like all that stuff has to be in there, in my view, for this to be a functioning MMO. I mean, all, all the other things, sure, but like for you to be able to play and play with people, those systems have to be in place. And as it is now, like they kind of function, but it should not be so difficult to find your friends and and get to where they are and send them a message. Um, and a lot of this stuff, I think, is like server performance issues that, you know, like I'm for some reason I keep seeing a chat message that I sent like nine days ago keeps popping up whenever I log in and it's not a good message. It was kind of a thing that I said during one of our like shitty encounters with some other group of people. And so I'm getting reminded of that every time we log in, but like that kind of stuff, like the ability to interact with like a group for group gameplay has got to be there. It just feels like it's missing. Um, and that's like, for me, that's pretty critical to see there. Um, so what I say game, gameplay features, the promise loops, the, the like, gameplay systems to support group gameplay. And I had another big one that I'm kind of blanking on now, but I, I think it's for me personally, just like tighter movement and the FPS side of the game. Um, nothing, nothing specific, just like the general, the way it feels to move your character around the world, I think needs to be a little less blocky, a little more like it's, um, I agree. Yeah. natural. I think one of the, somebody tried to explain this on Reddit. I thought it was good cause I didn't realize this, but For a lot of other FPS games, like the what people see as your character has nothing to do with how you you view your character. Like they're two completely separate entities. Whereas in Star Citizen, like your 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 camera view is actually locked to the position of your your entity in the game. And so that makes it so that um, your movement is actually kind of tied to where your character's physical representation is. Um, That is like academically interesting but in terms of practically like i want to be able to have a more natural movement and that's that's one of the things to me that is another like much like the 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 black barrier around the the um sniper scopes like that's a reminder that i'm playing a game and it's kind of frustrating but in my mind i i think like one is is tied to the other like i feel like where like me and tam were coming from if like that feature, I, I'm talking about it working completely seamlessly. So they could baby step it if they want. They could make it to where, you know, they split up the sections how they did. You know, you pick Stanton or Pyro and kind of go from there. If they get it working seamlessly right off the bat, I know it's kind of expected. But at the same time, we need that in order for them to build more yeah. off of. If it's not quite working right and then they decide to add any type of org, you know, support whatsoever, we know it's going to bust the game. We know that and we know what they're going to blame <laughs> if it isn't working. So I, I feel like that kind of stuff is what I'm looking at because we've also seen the better that works, the better frames we get so they can put better animations in the game for the character movement. Um, they can make it seem like it's someone moving, not a, a video game character moving. Um, really, I guess we just need to see them be able to lower the frames and everything we're doing. Um as far as gameplay, we know mining is going to get some new minerals coming up. We know cargo hauling missions are coming. There's there's tons of new content coming. But I need to see what the 3.23 dot question mark is going to bring, really, to know if it's going to go any further. Because we could see a, a huge stagnation pool after it comes out, and they're trying to fix all the most minor things that obviously didn't kind of rear their head when it came to uh, Evocati. Yeah, I think I, I would. Also, how I, see it, though. I think I'd also need to see. I mean, you guys are talking about Pyro and Stan. I think I need to see more than just those two systems before it could really be like a, a released game. Like yeah. I, I, I think to me, you can't release with the two. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons, but one just based on my years of experience in MMOs, like you got. <laughs> I don't know why, but like you got to have like a third place to be, like c- in terms of like continents and fantasy MMOs, like just having two places to go two factions two sides but especially if you put it in the context of this this game like where pyrus is to be like the complete like the 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 null security system and stand is high security there's got to be something in between those things for me to think that this is well rounded i think i think from my 
perspective or approach. I think I was functionally trying to focus on <clears throat> what it needs to have bare minimum for them to call it 1.0. If it doesn't have that, then I don't think they can call it 1.0, right? Because there's there's a lot of things on top of what I said that I I think would be ideal for it to have, and I think that they should put in to have a substantially better um release so like like for example you mentioned org gameplay almost all of the missions in the game outside of t- like time limited things uh, are not designed for org play um like like the payouts not there like oh let's haul cargo cargo doesn't pay for more than one person like like for the most part like yeah. The, the, the whole like oh hire a, an escort or hire a gunner like what? it doesn't it doesn't pay it doesn't pay for that so it's just like look man i'll just risk pirates because it doesn't pay enough you know and that's pretty much true across the board with almost every mission and the times when that's not true like the risky salvage or the cargo off hrts or erts whatever um that was an exception because they boosted the the money gain either due to a bug or because they wanted that specifically to be tested. Right. And so it actually paid to have people group up on that because it paid enough, but it, and it, it paid too much, but like, you know, still like you chop that down. It's like, like this doesn't pay for me doing it much less me and three other people, you know? So, so suddenly like the escort to make sure if security shows up early, I don't have to worry about them. And like, somebody to track to be in cargo while I drive the ship and like none of that's even on the table because it like, Hey man, you want to do an hour's worth of work for 15,000 yeah. alpha UEC? And it's like, no, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. That's <laughs> like, unless I'm independently wealthy, in which case, why are we doing things other than just for the sheer fun of it? But like, why are we doing things to make money that, you know what I'm saying? Like if, if I'm independently wealthy. So, um, I, I think ideally, you know, stuff like that where gameplay that is actually designed for groups to do on a regular basis that isn't an event because like Jump Town, which Jump Town doesn't pay a lot either, but Jump Town is, is designed for group stuff and pays, uh, what, million, two million an hour maybe? But but I mean, yeah. it, it, it used to be considered like a good money maker, right? And and I guess, I mean, putting this in the right context, like if you have a functional economy or an economy, whether it functions or not, is probably irrelevant, actually, just like some kind of like actual economy in the game where you've got set like expected average earnings for different activities and what you expect players to earn. Maybe that kind of solves that problem a little bit because then you're not, I mean, 15 thousand UBC an hour might actually end up being great uh in the grand scheme of things depending on what stuff ends up costing which is as it is today that's worthless so i guess establishing some kind of baseline for the economy its growth earnings that people can expect and what what makes sense based on what how things are priced in game you know like how quickly do they want people to be able to obtain certain ships for example by buying them in game that should probably drive how much you're going to make but yeah it's pretty pointless to like the industrial stuff which is awesome they doing an escort for that seems utterly pointless when like there's just no there's no benefit to it like for the for the player besides just the fun of it which is is one thing but like economically it's not viable it's all it's risk not no even reward, really not even particularly yeah. fun to be perfectly honest. <laughs> you just well, fly around the base ship and and probably don't get attacked. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, well, I mean, you can if you like goad people into attacking you. If you start, <laughs> if you do, we need to like, talk about it. Like even the boring stuff to me is really really fun. Like everything <clears throat> with industrial, anything that's group was a lot of fun. I think the most fun I think I ever had myself was when we had three or four vultures that were stripping the um the hammerhead but this was or no it was the c2 back when it was like infinite hold you could just keep scrapping it over and over and over um we just had three four vultures scrapping it and then they would pull up to a c2 and turn around and we'd pull the boxes off and load it up and we got half a c2 before we 30k like i mean it was slow but it was fun but now there's no reason to do it there's no real money to be made um uh, i beg to differ on that well, like no, 
There, there is, but now with you having to stack one SCU boxes versus if you were to hop in a reclaimer and pop 16 SCU boxes and hit a lot more areas at once, I mean, it's, it's not really worth it. Even if you have that many vultures rolling, it's more profitable just to hop in the reclaimer and hit your big boxes and your big jobs. Yeah. Unless I'm wrong. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's a time in versus, you know, how much you want out of it. Uh, RMC at this point is super valuable. Um, so if you're stripping with a vulture, you can get what, uh, I think it's like half a mil just on one full load, which isn't bad. And that with the, um, hopper now that decreases that time exponentially. And so you can make good money, but with the reclaimer, yeah, you're just eating a big old ship going and throw boxes and that's about it. Yeah. So I, I, I loved the vulture when I first got it. And obviously that was the environment where they were like launching salvage and testing that. So it was, I guess like artificially useful, but I haven't gone back to it because it just feels like compared to the reclaimer, it doesn't really, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like it just, right. the, it feels too, too small. Like I would love something in between the two, but I guess I don't need to be buying any more ships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, salvage like stripping salvage is definitely a stepping point till you get a reclaimer and that's what you do on the plus side i'm really excited for when they finally reach the uh release your roster we'll be able to do some really good salvaging with that then what's gonna suck though is that is that like you won't be able to do anything with that material right because it's it doesn't have a refinery on it it doesn't have any way to do anything with the materials that you salvage or mine is i know it does both it's a dual purpose industrial ship right so it does salvaging and mining industrial combat and it and and combat it just it has those size 13 torps but it has no refinery yeah but it does have the base building 3d printing module so like you'll be able to get the materials and then you go through and you kill a pirate uh group and then destroy their base and then use the foundations of their base and you just kind of print yours there so i think really oni will be using that a lot for his his uh outpost stuff you know oh, only that hey, it's, I, it's an all-purpose ship i forget does the arastra have a refinery on it no it's no, a 3d no. printing base building module no oh, one knows no one yeah, knows Oni. no one's mystery. answered that question it's a mystery i have no idea for, Tam's for not, those Tam, of you Tam, Tam's, Tam's not going to go ahead and clarify? Okay, there he goes. For he those can't, of you who are wait. unaware, that is completely false. It is a mining ship, only a mining ship. It does have a refinery. Just just so nobody assumes that that is in any way serious and then goes and buys it as a super-powered base-building ship, which it is not. Look, it's let's be clear. If, 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 if anybody goes and buys ships based solely on what we discuss here, they deserve to lose whatever amount of money they spend on that base. Honestly, Tam, I, I thought you were going to go with the bit so long that you were going to not be able to correct us. Uh, so I, th- <laughs> I thought we were going to get through it. That was, I was like, oh, wow, he's going to let it go. Okay. I'm surprised, but that's fine. I'm I, proud of him. I, I don't, I don't like people, people being misled permanently, you know, like short term, cool beans. Per- <laughs> permanently. No, permanently. Yeah, it's temporarily. Short term. <laughs> So people let, people will go buy stuff based like dude. Oh, I was listening to this podcast. They said it was the best, best. Oh my god! Like I, be able to shoot down pirate bases and build a base on of your own there. Like I, I don't want to be responsible for that. I was listening to four guys I don't know talk about something I don't have experience with. So I decided to go spend five hundred bucks on a ship and uh, <laughs> and now I'm I mad about it. I know people like that. Oh, I know not, people like that. That's not so. good. If you're gonna do anything blind off our recommendation, at least make sure you CCU it so Tam will <laughs> Yeah, that'll be a whole separate discussion if it hasn't happened already. <laughs> so so since since we've found a way to slide into talking about chips and ship purchases, um let's pivot to the 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 sale of the um Hornet F seven C Mark II. Um uh, and the the like the pathway to upgrade to an F7A. Uh, we're gonna hold on the event because I, I know they're kind of interlinked, but let's just focus on the ships itself for a second. Um, Tam, this is mostly I was thinking about your response to this. What does the release of like a kind of mythological military variant mean for the game? How do you see it affecting the way our org operates in the air? Um, like, how is that going to shape like the landscape of PvP air combat? 
to have that thing out there and like basically a guaranteed path to to win that upgrade. So for for a little bit of background, um CIG has always indicated that the military versions of anything um is better um in terms of firepower durability performance whatever right um it's just better um and as such they they generally speaking haven't sold them um obviously there are some exceptions to that the address m was sold briefly um the uh captured vanduul uh scythe was sold in very limited quantities i believe um and they did i i think a contest uh where somebody won a mark 1 f7a um and they they technically they had a thing where they sold the f7a mark 1 uh but it was a uh cosmetic um upgrade hey they also did a contest where somebody won an Idris m that that's not that yeah don't talk um, about that <laughs> oh oh just, oh at some point we're going to talk about that maybe not now but at some point <laughs> We do have to because it was bullshit and anyone who knows what we're talking about, that contest was bullshit and don't make bullshit rules if you're not going to follow your own bullshit. Whatever. It was dumb. Stupid. Anyway, uh, the, 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 the point is military <laughs> ships are not something that they've pushed out for the most part. They're extremely rare. They're hard to get. Um, and, and generally speaking, they've indicated that they're not going to be for um c- civilian use or ownership because they are better right um and so with that um their decision to push the F7A Mark II um which is the Mark II military variant full military of the Hornet um is actually kind of surprising. Um, I was expecting with this event, um, if they were including that as as a player obtainable, it was probably going to be tied to some sort of contest or something where there was going to be a very limited number of people who would get the military variant because it it's not supposed to be something that everyone and their mother can get, right? Um, and instead, as long as you do the event, um, you get a free upgrade. Which that's another thing, free upgrade. Like I've seen a lot of people complaining um, about this event and the reward system and, and so on and so forth. Um, but I don't, I don't think people understand that. Like, I understand it's it's a free upgrade from a ship that they just came out with, right? So it's like, oh, more money, who? Huh? Which you can CC to it. So I, I really don't feel like that's a valid complaint in any way, shape, or form. But anyway, um. You can get a military ship for for free. I mean, like the ship itself isn't free, but the upgrade is. Like the upgrade, like they could have feasibly charged five hundred bucks for this thing, and and it's a free upgrade. Like that's crazy. Um, and so depending on implementation of armor and flight systems and and so on and so forth. I mean, there's a lot of variables. I think that that we'll have to see kind of what it looks like. Um, this could be one of the best um, all-purpose fighters in the game. Um, just from the perspective of it, it is a Hornet, so it's it doesn't have God-tier quantum tanks to where you can, you know, jump from one end of Pyro to the other in two seconds and jump back, you know, like, it's it's got the same relatively limited range as any other Hornet, you know, um, it doesn't have size 10 wing guns, you know, like, I mean, it, it's it's not crazy overpowered. Um, but that being said, um, like DPS wise, it's pretty close to the F8, which is a very high up there ship um, handles like a Hornet, which is reasonably good. It's got a decently small uh, cross section. Um pretty good configurability again as a military variant it's supposed to be more durable whether that actually ends up taking effect or not i i I genuinely don't know because like there's a lot of like with cig there's a lot of stuff where they'll put stuff in writing and it turns out oh that's the marketing team wrote that but that has no bearing on the stats you know so like depending on 
because we have very limited um, exposure to what a military variant of anything actually is in terms of- Can I interrupt to add emphasis on that? I have to interrupt to add emphasis on that. Sure. There are times when things are written for a ship by marketing or by whoever, and it was not going to be put on the ship. So please keep that in mind, people listening. We we yeah. know, but I know there's a lot of people out there who sometimes have a hard time understanding that what they write is not what's actually going to be on it. Yeah. So it's one of that emphasis on that. <laughs> it, it's one of those things like right now, just based on the released stats that they've given us um, and then some data mine stuff. Um, functionally, it's a Hornet with really nice hard point sizes. So basically it's got big enough guns to where it can burst damage pretty close to what an F8 can do, which is pretty good. An F8 can push out a lot of, a lot of burst damage. Um, you know, it's got, got some decent missiles, nothing, nothing super crazy. Um, and, and that's it. Like, I mean, it's, it's very comparable to any normal Hornet. It just does more damage. Um, but not like by a factor of two or, or anything crazy like that. Um, so again, depending on, because this is really the first military variant of anything that anyone's gotten their hands on. Um, so depending on how that actually shakes out, um, will really kind of showcase what that looks like, um, beyond just the numbers on, on damage from the guns. Cause the other thing is like stuff like data mine stats. It's like that. That's great. Super happy for data mine stats. Um, but we're, we're pushing into master modes within the next three months. Um, you know, knock on wood, um, possibly even next month, you know? And so kind of depending on when that happens, these data mine stats may be completely off base in terms of damage numbers and, and stuff like that, because what a, you know, two size four guns and, and four size threes do right now versus what they do in master modes. Like it could be completely different, you know? Um, so like I said, it's, it'll be good. Um, on paper right now, it's it's a little bit less damage than the F8 and definitely less tanky than the F8 and less quantum field than the F8, meaning that on paper right now, the F8 is actually the better ship, um, even though the F8 that we have is the civilian version and this is the military version. But that's with the military ship not being flyable, it not being in master modes, etc., um, either way, it'll be a, it'll be a good ship. It'll definitely be a good ship. I don't think it's going to be like some meta breaking, you know, silver bullet, like, um, cause I, I've seen a lot of people foaming at the mouth thinking this is going to be the end all be all. Um, and I, I don't think it will be, I, I think it'll be good. I, th- I definitely think it'll be good, but it won't be unbeatable brokenness, uh, uh- in, in my opinion. A worthy point of comparison or, or discussion real quick was was the release of the F8, right? Which was not a military variant, but like in like lore wise, it's it's the newer fighter, right? We have the civilian version of it, but it, it came out with a, a significant number of guns on it. It's a heavy fighter, has a, as you mentioned, a large quantum fuel tank, so it can travel around the system without any kind of problem. Um, and I think once that ship was released that's all we saw like i think like the the th- three to four weeks right after it was released you didn't see much else in like most pvp encounters and i think it's still probably if you're if someone's attacking you when you're trying to take a pvp area without being able to actually check the target you can guess and be right 80 percent of the time that it's an f8c like and and I I'm, I'm guilty of that. Um, Zip, who is our, our our number two in in the air team, is lives, breathes, sleeps, will die in his F eight C. Um, Tam, you fly more more very like more 
a higher variety of ships than I think most people in our work do in terms of combat. I, I, I always expect to see you in something more appropriate. And you're like, no, no, no. I decided to bring a retaliator for this uh, dog fight. <laughs> but, <For> the <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but for the most part, like that ship's released really kind of set an interesting tone. So I was curious if this is going to do the same thing. It sounds like because at least the paper stats don't seem to provide for any kind of discernible advantage if you were to have it over an F8C, maybe not. And maybe that's why they're not too worried about it being in so many people's hands. Um, or is it just, I mean, again, there could be a lot of things. We, we don't know what we don't know in terms of what the lay of the land will look like come master modes. But it is interesting to me that they're so willing to have like a clear easily accessible pathway to receive this unless the phases of the and we'll get to the 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 event the overtime event in a minute unless the latter phases of this are so difficult that it may not be as guaranteed as as we were all assuming based on the message for the overdrive event release i i I think it i think it'll be relatively accessible i I don't think they're going to gatekeep it on a mind-blowingly difficult mission set, especially with their lack of um, having a history of making stuff only be group accessible. Like they've generally erred towards individuals being able to do stuff. And and obviously, like um, I think you can confirm when we were testing this overdrive thing in the PTU, there were some missions where it's like, okay, you, you kind of have to group up here, but like not. I I don't think there was anything where especially from an org context, if you have a group of, of communicative organized, you know, people running together. Um, I, I think, I think you can push through, um, and it might get spicy sometimes, but I, I, I don't, I don't anticipate it being, um, gate kept behind that. Um, I, in, in terms of like the F8 and, and this, because I, I do view this as, as, in a lot of ways, um, based on paper stats, um, an F8 analog in, in terms of combat expectations, I guess. Um, the F8's a really good all-purpose fighter. Like, it's it's very good at a lot of things, um, but if you get somebody who's uh, skilled in something like, for example, an arrow a skilled aero pilot can take out an F8 um, and without too much difficulty in a, in a, in a one-on-one situation um, because I, they've got that maneuverability to, to do that. Go ahead, Oni. I have been completely face rolled in an F8 by an arrow. So yeah, I can attest to that and I'm not a great pilot by any means, but yeah. Um, could not get my nose on it and there was just no hope for me whatsoever. And it it's it's not it's not that the F eight's bad and the arrow's good, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the arrow has its own its own issues, but um, the F eight is 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 really a strong jack of all trades in it, from a as a fighter, jack of all trades fighter, um, and that's great. And I and I genuinely expect the the F seven A to be in that same boat, um. But that doesn't mean it's unbeatable, um, and that's that's where bringing the right tool for the job, um, kind of like if everybody else is showing up in an F eight, I generally won't roll an F eight. I'll generally bring a missile boat or a torp boat or something because it's like okay, it's a dogfight right now, but wait till one of those dudes brings in a hammerhead, thinking he's all cool, and then suddenly it's like, hey, here's a size nine. Good luck, you know. I mean, like <laughs> it's it's having having that diversity and and having the tools to bring to where when someone shows up with something you can counter it is part of star citizen and that's part of the balancing and so i i i think a lot of people overlook that um especially with the f8 um but but possibly with with this f7a as well um you can have really strong all purpose ships but all purpose does not mean it's the best at everything. It it just means it's really good at being good at a lot of things, but it's not the best. And so if you can bring that best, it'll win. Um, and that's, I, I, I'm not worried about it. You know, I mean, 
could be wrong. Could just be like God, you know, incarnate. You know, <laughs> it was like the God ship. <laughs> God, God dear ship. <laughs> you sit down and a little halo appears above your ship. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, 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 I doubt that. I doubt that. No, it's uh, a good point that like this, despite what certain content creators would like for us to believe, the game is not about and isn't balanced around the idea of like one v one encounters all the time. It is something where like it's a MMO. And so if you have an organized group and you, you balance your, your force based on what your needs are, what you're anticipated, like, you know, resistances you're going to encounter, that's going to be, you know, you're gonna be better off than planning to have the, the, the meta ship that can win one V one encounters where you're not allowed to use missiles. But that could apply to, you know, really any number of content creators. Right? Any, any number. Of, I'm not calling out one particular content creator, not, not one, one there specific is, individual. There, there is not a one individual. That's right. Right. There's not a, a fucking one. individual one. <laughs> no, definitely not. Can we, put it out there. Can, we, can, we, can we beep that? Is that a. <laughs> I don't know. Should I, should I bleep it or should I leave it? I think I'm just going to leave it. Sweet <laughs> man, baby. Sure. Sure, why not? It'd be really funny if we beep or beeped it. <laughs> I, I, was dri- I, I, I was driving a certain way. Oni picked it up and took it like a step further. And then Yurik was just like, ah, oh, fuck this. Yeah, uh, we're just, we're going to do the like him. That's it. <laughs> like um, yeah. But then know. again, I'm a firm believer that uh, like the, my, my, my love for star citizen is, I mean, personally, you've, you can find some like niche creators out there who have decided I'm going to put a thousand hours in the Mustang and guess what? They can shit on most people. They find out in the verse, you know, while they're in their Mustang, um, small stuff like that is what still gives me hope that it's kind of going in the direction that I hope it's still going and that you can fly anything you want to. Now don't get me wrong. Obviously, you know, lights weaker than medium, which is weaker than heavy, so on and so forth, moving forward in master modes. But I still like that you can kind of fly what you want and put your own style on it. And you're not kind of driven to, if you don't want to spend your money on a ship you don't want necessarily. Yeah. Look, that, 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 that kind of gaming, this exists in, in like every, every game. Like there are people who are going to crunch numbers and they're going to figure out like, what is the best thing to do in every scenario? And that's how they're going to play in their own. There's oh min maxers are going to exist everywhere. I don't feel like that's necessary for the most part here, especially in the state of the games and currently like come, come 1.0, that could be entirely different. Um, and you know, it may end up being a min max culture. I hope not, but I, I do like, I do like to have a variety of ships because some things are just fun to fly. Like you, you guys don't, you guys don't like flying the Siouxland because it's got oh, that weird that fucked shit. up landing, landing like orientation. But that is crazy unique. I know, like every, like a lot of people melted it right away. But I was like, this is fun. It's kind of stupid, but it's fun. No, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have an orchestra. I'm playing for the angels. Right? Yeah, yeah I love that thing. Oh, oh there's so the god ship. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. You guys heard it here. Mishaps, uh, mishaps managed. Sealin is the godship. It it trumps all, and will will come master modes. Except for that massive cross section, that thing is going to get just lit up by every every missile in the area. Who doesn't? Isn't like it so far the boy? only starter with an elevator? I think so. I think so. Oh. Trump, I'm trying to think. Sealin. I mean, technically, the 100 series have a cargo elevator. Okay. Like, Technically, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's an elevator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let, let, let's let's actually jump in and talk about the event then, because that's it's linked to the ships, right? The uh, the Xenothreat Overdrive event. Can I get like a little bit of lore background, like a minute on Xenothreat and it's like its origins? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I have, I, I'm assuming it's going to come from Tam, but anybody who has that information well, is welcome the, to the share. The overdrive events, I, I'm aware of the overdrive. I, I, I'm read up on that one, but the Xeno threat as a whole, I'm just, all I know service level is they are humans who hate aliens, but I'm sure Tam yeah. can elaborate. No, that's, I mean, that that's basically, it's a terrorist organization that, that hates aliens and, and wants to do everything they can to, um, 
undermine and remove them. So, the, so, so they don't, they don't want us flying alien tech. They don't want alien tech being used in the system. They don't want any kind of piece of the aliens. It's all about like human superiority and advancement of humankind over alien. Like is that, that a good yep. surface level summary yep. of it? Okay. And any, any integration, um, cause the UEE does have alien members, um, not, not a ton, but, and they also have alien trading partners and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so any of that, they, they don't, they don't want, um, all right. So we, we got this event that involves kind of working to, to stave off efforts by Xeno threat to sabotage something or other, but the, the event itself is kind of linked to, um, this, this upgrade to the F7A. Um, it's a multi-phase event, which I haven't, I personally haven't seen in the game, but again, only been playing since June of 2023. So I don't know if there's ever been anything like this, but it's, it's going to last for somewhere between four and six weeks. I keep reading different things on this, but we, we only had the ability to access and, and do the first phase of the event, um, starting on Friday. Um, this, I don't have a, a lot of good things to say about time gating of content like this. Um, it's a staple in like the fantasy MMO genre that I have a lot of experience in. Um, I understand why games do it, but I still don't like the content drip. Um, especially if it's not especially difficult, then it just feels kind of stupid and artificial. Like if this were a really hard event where we needed several days to try it and get through it, then I kind of get it, but it was fairly easy. I feel like if people can can get through the stuff pretty quickly, then that gating just feels really artificial. I still enjoyed it. I, I still like any kind of event where we get to do stuff together, where there's a benefit to doing things together. I think we had some experience with it, kind of the, um, the illegal data heist missions that were like the, I think like the, the precursor or kind of the CIG kind of testing the template for, for the, for this phase of the, of the event. Um, but I think the event is actually great for showing why like the first two M's and MO matter. Um, like as an org, we were able to kind of stop this. I did see on Reddit on, on spectrum, like solo players complaining, um, which is like to be expected because solo players are always surprised that things are harder when you're solo. But in contrast, something else I saw that I thought was pretty awesome were a bunch of solo players talking about how this forced them to group up and what a good time they had, which was pretty cool. Um, because I think this is exactly the kind of thing where like you benefit from that. Like I, you know, there were some hard limitations built into the mission that meant that only a certain number of people could actually accept it at any one point in time. So the only other way to get it was for one of those people to share it. Um, unfortunately I expected that based on some of the stuff I've seen from the star citizen community, that people would just kind of hoard the mission and not share it. But that didn't, that's not what I, what actually ended up happening. A lot of people did share it, um, got people involved in new groups and, and completed the mission, which is again, that that's awesome. Um, before, you know, for our purposes, before knowing how it really worked, I think we started making a lot of plans as an org for how we were going to ensure that no members got left behind on it. Um, you know, because we figured, F7A would be a big deal. Don't want people getting screwed over on it. Let's make sure we have a way to keep members progressing at a steady pace and keep up. So um, I think what ended up happening is we found that it probably probably not going to be that big of a problem. But to me, this event showed the clear benefit all around as to why orgs are beneficial and why like group play um, at a minimum makes a lot of sense in this game. So how did you guys uh, you know take the first phase of this this event? I thought it was actually pretty great. Um it's like you said, this was something that while in the beginning it seemed like solo players could do, this was definitely geared more towards group activity, org activity, whatever you want. Um, you could technically call it the second iteration of an org-based activity with the Idris being the first, despite what anybody else would say. Um, but with this being the first iteration of it, it might be easy now. It may not be easy later. And this also sets the ground for larger scale things. Um, how many people are we going to need for later iterations? Is this just considered an easy task? What's a harder task going to be like? Um, are we going to need an entire fleet to do the last part? Um, or are we going to need more than what our org even has? Are we going to need to recruit 
strays or other solo people that are looking to do this as well. Um, and kind of like you were saying how people were mad at it with being solo or you're not being able to solo it rather, they just need to get over it. Um, this, as you had put it, it's an MMO, it's massive multiplayer. It's not, if you want to play a single player game, go play something else. There's a bunch of star Wars games. You can pilot those all you want. <laughs> bunch of uh, um, it's quite right. It's quite the, the single player version of this game. Right. Or that, um, or what's that other failed Bethesda one? Um, Wait, what's it called? I can't remember the name of it. Stars. Stars in it. It's got star something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Starfield. Um, there you go. Starfield. Thank you. I, I thought you guys were joking. <laughs> I, know, oh. I, 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 could, I literally couldn't remember. <laughs> But no, I, I think it's great, um, especially if we're just treading new ground. Uh, I really don't see any negativity to it. I know you said that you don't like the content drip, but that also soft gates anything to where our gamers are just going to, you know, spend six fucking hours just doing this whole one thing, trying to speed run it. And it's forcing them to kind of slow their roll. Now, when the last part comes out, there's nothing going to stop them from doing that anyway. But it's nice to look forward to something for once instead of like blowing it out on a single Friday and then just being back to nothing. That's fair. That's very yeah. fair. And, 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 and I'm not like a super hardcore gamer anymore. I, I've been there. I don't have time to play that way anymore. I think it's more just like I, I don't like someone telling me you can't finish this yet for no reason other than because we've decided you can't not because it's you're not good enough or you you're you don't have the capability or it's it's purely like no we're just gonna like this is one of the things that feels like a marketing tactic to me that like this needs to lead up to invictus for whatever reason that that's my personal offense at the at the time gating here specifically but you're absolutely right that it is it is nice to like to know that next Friday we have something that we're going to do and it's going to be tied to this and, and we'll have 15 people on again to, to tackle it. Just I would like to, to put something out bubble. there real quick. While this, the, the way they're doing this now, yes, um, we do have to keep in mind that ideally in the future, these missions are going to kind of pop spontaneously without, you know, a lead up to Invictus or a lead up to any mm. particular event. They'll just kind of be popping up. So that is one thing to remember the, 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 the Overdrive initiative was their introduction to Overdrive or Project Overdrive, which was essentially the CDF reaching out to hit Xenothreat where it hurts, essentially. They want to um, attack them on the home ground. They want to be, you know, they want to do something instead of always reacting to Xenothreat doing something. So kind of cool lore-wise, but I, I am really curious to see what the second part of the mission is because in the PTU, I got to level three and level three for me solo was very hard. Um, at one point in time, not only were the guards running around like actual players, what it felt like, but there was three codes I had to find for three terminals that were pinging at once. And I was like, Oh, okay. Can't do this. <laughs> but, but you guys, you guys only tested the different levels of this first phase, right? You, you guys didn't see any of the phases beyond this, like the data heist style missions, right? There was one more that I know Tam and the air team attacked, which was, how, how did that one work, Tam? It, it was called something else, but it wasn't on the ground. It was in the air, and they were more sporadic than the ground missions were. It was it was still part of Overdrive, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, um, it was an air-based mission as opposed to the data heist or, or bunker type. Um, and, and if I recall correctly, because we went through three or four of them, um, you essentially roll up and there's just a lot of ships to kill. Um, like a lot, like it was, I don't think there were any like capital ships, um, but you know, multiple hammerheads, a bunch of fighters. I mean, it was a lot of ships. Um, and so ideally you're rolling in there with like a full combat group and, you know, going at it. Um, it would, I would, I would say, is probably the equivalent of like, I can like pirate swarm level. 
maybe I was I was going to say like a couple like two or three ERTs like mashed together maybe um I I don't know it, it's just it, it's a lot very target rich environment um and uh yeah um and I don't know if that's going to be one of these weekly phases I I hope so <laughs> I hope so that'd it's be a, cool it's a lot that'd of fun really cool. um I I obviously prefer to be in a ship as opposed to trudging around on the ground um not to mention, you know, from from that perspective, if we're rolling the whole org, you know, you can have like manned hammerheads and and things like that, which is good times. Um, but, um, yeah, they they had that, and I th- I think there was a a phase. Correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but there was a phase where it had to do with like uh, taking over Korea or responding to a Korea takeover, or something like that. Um, so I mean, we've seen some of that, and and. But that that's PTU. So it's like that's that's the test phase and right. we don't know how that ties into how they release it here. Because like the the bunker stuff was for this week, uh as in last last Friday when they when they pushed it out, was substantially easier than Oh yes. Oh, everything yes. except for like the first round in PTU. Like PTU was much, much harder. Hmm. Um I would say than even the the fifth level on last Friday's um, thing. So just just from that perspective, um, I I think it'd be pretty interesting because um, I mean if if this if this stuff is going for you know six weeks or whatever, which as far as I know they haven't actually said anything about the end time. No time it'll be, limit. No nothing. It'll, It'll be they they said before Invictus, but they said to be announced. So whatever that means. When you ran it uh, on PTU, did you have the number of people that we had this Friday? Because I mean, we, I mean, it felt like we were like comically overpowering whatever we were doing. No, Hello. but but like so, for example, with the bunkers. Um, so when we did it, they they correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but they'd ask for one code at a time. Um, whereas in That's PTU, it, the entire time it, it was like two or three codes at a time with, with oh, the so higher you, tier. So you might have needed to have multiple people in the server room along with multiple people pulling codes and then entering those multiple codes. We just had well, Yurik well, running that's... around with his head cut off while I was running around outside <laughs> searching for like five codes at once. It was, okay. it was yeah, cool. so I mean, when I was on, um, when I was on the PTU and I made it to wave three, that that's the part that got to me was I would ask the, the code for one and then I put it in and ran to the next one and saw it was already flagging. It was like, whoa, run back over so it was just like multiple ones at once meanwhile this time it's like you guys said we got to the hardest difficulty and I, Which, it was it was it was kind of frustrating running back and forth to all the different terminals but it was just one at a time it wasn't too 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 challenging really yeah. is it possible that that could be part of the second wave or the second half I personally think it might be due to that little thing we discovered where even though we were moving along waves, for some reason, the first one or two waves repeated themselves. And then if you remember, the last wave was also like one of the easy missions where it only wanted us to complete one upload and that was it. So I think maybe the missions weren't. Well, maybe I, I don't know. Moving right for like week two. Like, I, it, I, it, I it sure. Kind of suck. If it maybe repeated itself, but I mean, yeah, I sure, I sure hope like the later phases are not just like harder versions of the first phase. I hope there's some variation in the mission type. Otherwise, that's going to be a bummer of an event from my perspective. I, I do think based on what we saw in the P2, I do think that there will be more variation, both in terms of air component stuff. They had the Korea thing, um, Stuff like that, like they had more in the PTU, and I think that's going to be reflected in the PU. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's just going to be like how many weeks of data heists and like, okay, you you won, you know, like especially from the perspective of like, hey, we're authorizing you guys to use an F seven C Mark two for this thing. Okay, now here's a bunch of bunker missions. You know, it's yeah, like make a, it fun. Why am <laughs> I in, hard? Like, like why? Do, cry. What? Like I want to, I want to cry out of frustration that oh, this mission's so hard. So I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, I think, May, yeah. Maybe week two is like, quote unquote, the easy air version of it. You go up, you kill a few things and that's it. Week three if, is the harder bunker. 
week four is the harder air, and then you got the big week five finale where everybody just gets screwed. If it doesn't get harder, I'm personally blaming you. <laughs> yeah, okay. we'll, we'll hold you I, I can do that. I'll uh, <laughs> delete my account and. <laughs> oh no, you can't yeah. do that. That's Command not authorized. Ritual Sudoku. I, just make sure you donate your ships to the org. <laughs> um, <laughs> say Ritual Sudoku. <laughs> Um, you know, it's funny though, cause like the, gotta always keep the stuff in perspective, right? That like, you know, we're talking about having blown through it and this is easy, but like not everybody found this easy. There are, there's no shortage of complaints from people about how they're gating the ship behind an event and this event is tough. It's impossible to pull off solo. Oh, I, you know, I'm not gonna have the time to do it. People coming up the time to do this don't make sense to me because I'm like, it's a multi-week event. You don't know when it's going to end. You can like you have a full week to do each phase, you know, theoretically. And then, and then congeminal, like just like there is, if people will find anything to complain about. I so I did see one post that made me laugh. The guy was like, I have no technical opportunity to complete these missions is, will they be selling the upgrade at a later point? And everyone's like, what do you mean? No technical opportunity. And the guy wasn't answering for a while. And finally he responded was like my GPU fried and I need to get a new one. <laughs> or replace. Was like, okay. I was like, well, I guess that's fair. That is a technical <laughs> loss of that opportunity. <laughs> but I, I've also, I've appreciated seeing, you know, it, it, it's a, this is a fantastic opportunity for CIG to address their issues for their more um, unskilled crybaby players who, I mean, can't seem to put one foot in front of the other. Um, cause there's also been a whole bunch of people who completed all five easy peasy. We even saw people bragging in chat and it's solo and, and the verse we were in that they had just soloed five out of five and it was a yeah. little rough, but they were able to do it. So if you are having that hard of an issue, um, I would say look into another game or join a group, honestly, your best bets. Yeah. Like it's, it, it is time to perhaps realize that this is not meant to be done and everything in this game is not meant to be done on your own. So mm -hmm. find people to play with or join an org. Mishap is recruiting. We have recruitment posts oh, posted nice. around on, on Reddit, on uh, spectrum. You can check out what we, the kind of stuff we get into by checking out the YouTube channel. Um, it's just mishap Inc on YouTube. Take a look at the kind of stuff we do. Like we're always happy to have people come along despite how often we seem to be on the wrong side of some kind of like internet based, like bitch fest knife fight. Um, we we were just a group of people playing to have fun. Um, and we do that pretty often from, from what you can hear. So, uh, I'd encourage anybody who hears this and anybody who had a hard time with this event and says, Hey, maybe I should play some people to check us out. Cause that's just what we do. Uh, we do stuff together. And some of that happens to be, you know, starting fights with other groups of players. But for the most part, we're just carrying people through the game together. Learning together. I mean, the game, we're, we're all experiencing it together. So the frustrations, we're going through them together. The the ups, the downs, it's, at this point, it's become a support system as well for everything that Papa Roberts wants to put us through. <laughs> we will pick a fight with you and then carry you to pick a fight with another person. Absolutely. L literally. We've literally done that. Tam here has murdered somebody in the air kick them out of their ship, scoop them up while they were falling and then brought them into the org. Yeah. Yeah. Who was that? I don't know, but he got annoyed with them and kicked them like two weeks later. So <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean we're going to keep you here, but Not. it does mean like you are, you were welcome to join at least temporarily. <laughs> Although I do think I, I do think I keep mixing up that story from that night, which I think was actually John and Wi-Fi with the Tam and Wi-Fi one, which was the sneaking on the guy's ship and and killing him and then having him join the org. It snuck on their ship. They went to a location. I jumped out of their ship before they realized it, waited till they got off their ship, uh, assassinated them, stole their stuff, left, um, and then uh, basically ended up back at the station, stole all their beer. They had a, they had a whole box of beer. It was great. Um, and then uh, invited them to the org because... Um, Why not? Because yeah, that's, that's what you do after you murder hobo someone.
it wasn't murder. The, it was uh, piracy or theft or something. I mean, I'm sure there was a reason, you know, I mean, it, it, I didn't know they had the beer until <laughs> after, but like I did steal their <laughs> beer. So, I mean, like it wasn't murder hoping because I stole from them. We may have fun at your expense, but we'll take you out uh, to dinner after. So, you know, yeah, pretty much. I, I did send him a million after I, you know, he stole his beer yeah. and gave him a million. I mean, wasn't it heat that John and Wi-Fi basically trolled into the org? I think it was heat. I don't think you guys was it? sadly understand how many people we've <laughs> well, no, like into this org. I'm being serious. Like, yeah, like no. really, from my standpoint as being here from the very beginning, there's, there's been a lot of people who were victims of us and then we're like i mean i want to try well, <laughs> so they came to our side it's, well, it's, it's more like we see an individual player and like we're just doing our normal thing and they try to go against us or whatever it is and we murk them and then we're like you're by yourself and they're like yeah and we're like why why are you by yourself and they're like I, I don't know i don't know what i'm doing I'm like okay get over here dude like <laughs> let us show you what you're supposed to be doing and they're like oh okay and then it works you know i mean it's it's not so much that we're going out of our way to pick on individuals. It's just more like, hey, man, we're doing our thing and, and you got in our way or, or whatever it is, you know. It's and more like wrong was place, it wrong time. No, I think no, it, knows how it, goes. it, it, was, it might be because we, we were doing Jump Town on Daymar and this guy kept asking, like, if he could just come see it. We kept being like, yeah, come, come closer. <laughs> just kept yeah, killing him. Heat. I think it, then, which, which is funny because that's a really good pickup because heat's really fun. Oh yeah, for sure. And it was what they they got down there, knocked him out, took him prisoner, took flew, him, flew like, him about sixty k up, and then threw him out of the ship. Threw him out of the I'm ship. I'm curious now. I'm curious how many people we've interacted with that it was at first like fuck these guys, and then it became a mm, okay. These guys are kind of cool. Well, heat's on tonight, so when we're done, we'll go ask him just to clarify. Because I, I was I do, gonna I, say we could just pull I him think, in I, here. I think, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, heat! Did we kidnap you into the org? And he's like, "Yeah, okay." Should, cool, should thanks, we? Bye. Should we? Should we do that? We don't have to use it. We can. We can. We can cut it. We should we just drag him up and say, "Hey, real quick." <laughs> well, his connection's funny. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. true. That's true. So, long story short, um, if you get jumped by us, don't take it personally. We might just invite you. You might end up. You might end up being help us part of jump someone else. Exactly. We will carry <laughs> you into trolling. You're helping <laughs> us help CGI develop the game into what we all hope it can become one day. So I feel all like right. we've we've covered the gamut <clears throat> of um, most of what developed over the past week in the game. What I wanted to cover. Any uh, closing thoughts from you, gents, before we we wrap it up? Drink more Ovaltine. <laughs> The Arastra has a refinery. No, it doesn't. A crummy Lies. commercial. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, hey man, uh, RSI is of... paying me good money to to put that in the next three episodes. So, oh no, I was ta I was talking about I was talking about the I was about the Ovaltine, not the not the Arastra. We know the Arastra is a refinery less combat. He vessel. was talking about a Christmas story. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So, lo so lots of stuff coming coming down the pike lots of stuff to be excited for i feel like there is like a bit of optimism in the air around the game that i i don't see that often like people seem pretty pretty excited i don't know if it's just hopium um but i i really oh, feel I'm, like I'm fully erect right now like, <laughs> like, right, right now like <laughs> right now I'm, I'm excited in it yeah it's gonna prolong past 14 hours okay, don't, you have, don't, you have don't to hold that up. for a long time don't, don't stand up <laughs> but i I'm excited for Citizen Con because I feel like this is going to be a good one. Um, and I, I, I think I lucked into a phase of joining the game where I like everyone's you all, you've all been waiting for years with like nothing happening. And I'm like, I don't see what everyone's so upset about. Like things are just coming out all the damn time now. Um, so I, I feel like I'm going to be lucky enough to see something pretty cool um, in October and they're looking forward so to that. So I, I, I have hope uh, and I'm we're not do a live uh, podcast that aren't we? We, I don't not I don't we say live? Oh no, I, I think we're going to do it live in front of like our org, but we're not going to stream it live. I think that, that was that was my my how I envisioned that. Um, but I I um I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out in the course of the next couple of months. 
Um, and again, anybody who's listening, who's curious about what we do and what we get up to, we are, we are open. So, um, find one of our, our recruitment posts, click the link, um, or message us on our channel and we'll find a way to get you in. Uh, again, thanks for listening, everyone. And we look forward to, uh, talking to you next time. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.